I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series, featuring conversations with me and many other guests who have agreed to accept Suge's Collect Call. Suge will be putting periods to all question marks while answering everything hip-hop fans worldwide want to know. History will be made and documented in real time, each week on Collect Call with Suge Knight. Suge and I both want to hear from you, so if you have any questions or input, please be sure to contact us at Breakbeat Media, authentically hip-hop. Welcome to Collect Call with Suge Knight. This is Global Tell Link. You have a prepaid call from Suge Knight. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, style 5 now. But you guys have kids too. If the truth come out, how fucked up you motherfuckers was, because anything, if you've seen California Love on a commercial or playing at a football game. West Coast makes some noise! Come on, put your hands in the air! Everybody put your hands in the air! That's just like diamond money. Blood money, as they would say. When they went to Africa and killed those motherfucking Africans for those diamonds, and you know, What's the difference if you, I did all the work and my writers wrote all the songs and I don't want to put motherfucking Roger Trotman on that song and pay this motherfucker over 200 some thousand cash to make it happen. And you think he wants to take it and give it to the G people? You think he wants to take it and let him perform here? You think the people wants to benefit off of Tupac who has something to do with his killing? Or who didn't like him? What kind of shit is that? So you, you yeah, said that for, the same time. for California Love, you, you and your writer never got nothing and, and uh, who's that, Interscope? Um, this is the thing. This is how the song went with California Love. And quick, the first one started out with the saying, who was doing your source awards? As we putting everybody in the cages and getting ready to come out to jail cells, right? Quick was like, California knows how to party. And that was quick saying that. Mm. So this other guy, did a track. When he did a track, Flex wrote the whole song. Jay Flex, incredible young dude. He ain't a young dude no more. He's a man. He's a good dude. He wrote the whole song. Me hearing the song, I'm like, well, they said, well, Dre wanted for, you know, for him. I said, man, it'd be another 10, 15 years before we put our album on Dre because he's not going to do the work. I mean, everybody know that. He do it out maybe 10, 15 years. I said, so look, drop the second verse, and when Pac get in, I'm gonna let him take the um, cassette and write to it. Pac came to the studio, I said, I got something for you. I played it, I said, the second verse is dropped for you, go on and write to it. He said, go on and write to it. Shit. Man, load me up. He went in the booth and did that shit. After he did that part, I wanted to talk to Roger. I get on the phone with Roger. I said, look, man, I need you to come on uh, and do some shit for me. Roger said, Suge, man, you can't pay me because I owe taxes and I can't get none of the money. I said, look, I'm going to get you out here. We'll talk when you get here. The minute Roger walked in that studio, I gave him 50 racks of cash off the top. The minute he told me his situation, I gave him another 100 racks. So I gave him 150 racks before he even hooked up the talk box. But that motherfucker went in that motherfucker and made magic. Because I brought him in to make the magic. I'm not like a security guy or another motherfucker that they produce records or they got something to do with music. I really, I don't want to play lead guitar, bass guitar, and drums and write and read music. And I ain't trying to promote myself. That's just what it is. So when Roger did that, then I gave him another 200 grand 
just to be in the video. That made California love. So, Pac wrote his verse, Jay Flex wrote Dre verse. As far as the California love, Dre just, he knew it was gonna be a hit. And how you know these motherfuckers hate Pac? They did the Super Bowl the day, the day, the day before in California love. You said you had, they did. I'm asking you, Dave. Oh, okay, so on remember. the biggest platform of stage, the biggest song for California, the Super Bowl is in Inglewood. Woo to Inglewood, right? Now, if you look at that, it's in California. And y'all not gonna test California? Mm -hmm. Because all those people out there, I can't say all, but most of them, at least we know two of them, hate it pot. And at the same time, since I wouldn't sell my company, since they couldn't go go out and take my company, they did fraud to beat my company. And when you go and get lawyers and stuff, they all connect to the same people. They'd be on board. I went and um, one guy got a real answer from me, and I ain't gonna say his name, he know Crump. Before him, a lot of people talked to Crump from me. And the message came back to Crump was, well, you know, uh, 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 Hill's not still alive. He's not dead. I only represent the people who's dead. So I guess you gotta be killed by the police for this dumb motherfucker that's representing a motherfucker that's right. But if they steal something from you and fuck over your people, they don't got no, they don't got no love for you. But at the same time, it's crazy because I remember back in the day, doing time. When people say something bad about Ofer Ruffin, shit, I got in the ass. You talking about this black one. I fired that shit up, stop the shit up, don't say nothing about this black sister. But at the same time, Ofer wouldn't put rappers on her show. But Ofer promoted Straight Out of Compton, even though Straight Out of Compton tried to kill me and had me doing time right now. I've been gone nine motherfucking years. Over nine years. Like I said, I ain't looking for no sympathy. But, you know, all these motherfuckers want to rewrite history and lie. That's a real cold problem that we have. Hmm. But, you know, what you think, Dave? I mean, I think that, um, you know, a lot of things are starting to come to light slowly but surely, um, you know, with some of these recent developments and also with the impact this podcast can have because people are getting to hear a lot of things from you that they've never heard before, a lot of information that people aren't aware of, uh, even with these first couple episodes that we, we've put out so far, you know, the, the, the reaction has been incredible and people are really, you know, like locked in. They want to hear more and they want to understand more. And like you've been saying from the beginning, you know, this is about trying to bring the truth out and then trying to help this younger generation. Culture. Look, you know, it's the a, culture. Hey, Dave, this is culture, right? Because, you know, any person to do a label or whatever, they should be better than me in their fault. Because I didn't have nobody to teach me. I made a lot of mistakes. Who don't make mistakes? But the next generation will have to make the same mistakes we made. We build shit and we destroy shit. We got to keep building shit. So I keep hearing people talking about microdosing. I really didn't know what that was until we hooked up with our friends at Microdose Gummies. They sent me some of their products and I've been uh, learning how these gummies can really help you. You know that relaxed feeling you get after a nice shower or when your to-do list is finally finished? Well, that's exactly what microdosing helps you feel. Now, everyone has their own way of using these products, whether it's to help get you focused, get super creative, or even just get a good night's sleep. One gummy can do the trick. It does it for me. 
Microdose gummies really puts me in that sweet spot between CBD and THC. So I feel great without feeling like I'm not sharp. And these gummies are becoming a staple in my house. Even my fiance has discovered them. With just half a gummy, she has a lifted mood, creative boost, and manages her anxiety. So to learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code COLLECTCALL to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Try them today. Just go to microdose.com and use code COLLECTCALL. You can find the links right here in the show description. Code collect call for 30% off your first order plus free shipping. And then when you look at it, it's like when you take managers, right? It's different back in the day. Back in the day, you need a manager because you got to get a demo done. And somebody got to get it to the majors and get them a deal. Now you have an internet. You got power. You don't need these managers just to get money out of you. And if you, I ain't saying managers not great, but don't get a manager that used to work for Interscope or other companies because they loyalty gonna be to the company, not to that artist. And then a manager mean this: if you, I don't want to get the same names, but then people get the, in their motherfucking feelings. But you know, if you're a female artist or a male artist, if you want me to say the name later, I'll tell you because I don't give a fuck. Can't nobody do shit. But it's like this. If this artist, and she's a female artist, and if they're going to give her a million dollars for a merchandising deal, okay? They're going to give her a million dollars to do promote something, okay? And the manager goes to them and say, hey, they're going to give you a million dollars for this merch deal. They're going to give you a million dollars for this commercial. The artist is supposed to be smart enough to say, wait a minute. They already was going to give me a million dollars for each one of those, right? They're going to say, yeah. Well, what is you doing? If they was going to give me a million dollars for a merch deal, you should say, I'm going to get you two million dollars, and then they get 20% of that. Don't get 20% out of something that's going to give you any motherfucker, away. But, you know, once again, I think we need to spend more time figuring out how could we help each other and how could we hurt each other. And you got all these people on these different podcasts. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Taking time to gossip. Even with, uh, I ain't saying everything people talk about is true or not true because I'm in prison. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all people know these days is trying to get clicks and saying things to, you know, they don't understand that you can, you can tell the truth and deliver information in a way that can still get people's attention without, you know, exploiting it or or hyping something up or that sort of thing. And uh, you know, that's what that's what I'm building with with Breakbeat, and and we're gonna prove that that theory out and hopefully set set an example for everyone. Hey Dave, what's up, sure? Yeah, so before I get out of here, they probably cut this motherfucker off in a minute, but it's like this. I also want to say this about Pac. I want to say this about Tretz. I want to say this about Scarface. These three young men, as artists and men, have a bond that we need to we need to teach. And people need to uh, use a model what they did from back then, because Tretch and Tupac was road dogs. Still today, you can count on Tretch to represent Pac. You can count on Tretch to live with Pac for does he still represent that man. Same thing with Scarface. The face is gonna fuck with Pac no matter what. That's why I was so joyful when we did that song with with Face and Pac Smile. Smile for me, man. These two people love Pac and they ride for Pac. And they're not doing it on no fake shit. They're doing it because they're two real motherfuckers. Same thing with Devontae. Devontae had a great relationship with Pac. 
And Devontae is one of the best guys in his industry. And I say that because, you know, even when Missy's talented, well, Missy got her, got her thing in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which she deserved. They had all these different people congratulating her. But why didn't they have Devontae? Devontae signed her. Devontae discovered her. Devontae told her. Same thing with Timberland. But with Devontae, hmm. you know, and it's, once again, I said this before, Devontae had Missy, Timberland, Genuine. They took him from it. Rough Riders, Big D, what's up with you? The homie. Big Y, all those dudes, the Rough Riders, you know what I mean? That was the homies. Yeah. They had said DMX, the locks, Eve. Once they blew them up, the majors basically fucked them out of it. They didn't do right. But this is a thing that goes on and on and on and continues to happen. And we still, we haven't moved forward. They, they they always have all the artists fighting each other, going against each other. But when somebody dies, that company makes more money. Somebody get hurt, that company makes more money. Well, who the money really going to? Not the motherfuckers who making the music, all the motherfuckers that's rapping. It's those companies who's not gonna be there who discover these people. That's a serious problem. And it's constantly repeating itself. You're right. It's going to get it's only gotten worse and nobody nobody really talks about it. So that's why it's so Bear, look, we gotta set up day for the for the for the union. Yeah. The union for the people. And you know, these artists need to have medical dental. You know, I'm going down unless retirement pensions. You know, you take the Super Bowl. Music is so influenced by the Super Bowl that we perform there. Even if athletes get pensions in retirement, you know, artists do. <laughs> I laugh at a lot of that. Because uh, I'm born and raised on the West Coast. And I ain't never put nothing before the West Coast. But a nigga ain't gonna kick me out of my house. It's like a nigga ain't gonna kick me out the West Coast. So all those shit they talking, you know, be about that shit. Don't start the shit getting high behind the police and sick the police on motherfuckers. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So when it comes down and when it's actually said and done, all the people, a lot of neighborhoods got destroyed because the one motherfucker tried to recruit some motherfuckers from Compton. Southside boys, they were doing something one time boys getting their money. The minute they start fucking with Puffy, that shit got to caving in. And we all know what's up with that. You know who won that one. But that became high and one motherfucker trying to turn motherfuckers against each other. And even if you take the authorities knew from day one, yeah, they could talk about it. Now, this is the crazy shit. We was going to the soul training. We go to the Soul Train Awards. It probably was maybe 75 motherfuckers from Compton on their way to those awards. It probably was a whole, it was a bus full of people from the Bay going to those awards with us. And then we had other people going to those awards with us. And the Soul Train Music Award goes to Notorious B.I.G. Shout out to my management, Puff Daddy, the whole label of Arista. Yeah, everybody said they love Pac, but then it was the police, off duty police officer. But you know, ain't no such thing as off duty. Once you're a cop, you're always a cop. You're a football player, no such thing as a former football player, a former cop, former hoe. You always these things, that's who you are, right? So when you look at it, this cop, 
told the other police who getting paid by us who say they love pocket, they're supposed to be protecting pocket. Try not to let none of our people in. I'm gonna give you a heads up. How you gonna give us a heads up and let them in and not let our people in? But everybody had to burn rush to force their way in. You had a guy with the puffy in him. This person ran, that person ran. You had one motherfucker who pulled out a gun. You got LAPD. Can't cuff this motherfucker for his gun, but you never heard about their case. Just go away. Or you never connected dots. You know, ain't about you don't connect the dots. You know the dots. You just so against death row and Tupac and our movement that you look the other way other than forming and fuck with y'all. So this is some crazy shit that people just don't realize is just there. If they don't even overlook it, it just keep coming back up. Like I said, God's forgiven, the street's not. And you know, everybody want to make a, you know, pound on their chest like that King Kong. Ain't no fun when a rabbit got together. Shit. Do your time. I'm doing mine. And, uh, you know, it's like some crazy shit, but the thing, Dave, you know, it's still a lot of strong women. Shot goes out to, you know, Kamor. She always been a solid woman. That's good. I heard she's stepping up, representing Kim. And I've been knowing Kim. She always been solid. Diddy's ex-girlfriend Kim Porter passed away in November 2018, but I'll be sure. Porter's ex and father of her eldest son, Quincy, has his own theory. Al doesn't think she died of an illness. He thinks it was a homicide. And you know, just like Misa, these women, they gonna stay down. What's I say before? A lot of times people say, trust no bitch. I say, trust no fake homie. That bitch gonna move. And the homie might be undercover. Texas, Dallas, y'all got a guy named James Woman in your James William in your town, laying low, pat, pat him down for the wires. This is gonna be a whole country bunch. Of, it's gonna be a whole bunch of motherfuckers in Texas in handcuffs. Y'all keep talking to that motherfucker. You have 60 seconds remaining. There it is. Hey Dave. Yeah. Before you go, Dave, I want to ask you one question. Yeah. What makes you think that yeah, because a motherfucker in prison, that I don't got shit to do? The more I got one or three nuts, you know, shit, I'm busy too, motherfucker. You <laughs> want bro and all that shit, but I got to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to yeah, make this gumbo, then go work out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, bro. Yeah.